it's time to KO the idea of a carbon tax. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Politicians are attracted to taxes the way flies are attracted to manure. One new tax that has Washington politicians abuzz from both sides of the divide is a levy on carbon emissions. The more CO2 that is released to produce a product or service, the higher the exaction. In other words, a carbon tax is a way to tax the use of hydrocarbons like oil, coal, and natural gas. Politicians love it because it's not visible to consumers the way a sales tax on gasoline would be. Advocates claim that this levy would reduce the output of carbon dioxide because it would raise the price of things that use a lot of fossil fuels when they're being made. Higher price, less use, equals lower emissions. To address the criticism that such a levy would be regressive because the higher prices would hit lower income people harder proportionately than those with bigger incomes, supporters say there should be rebates for those below certain income levels. 35 countries have carbon taxes, but not the U.S. There are, at last count, three carbon tax bills before Congress that have bipartisan support. Now, some conservatives buy onto this tax because they think it shows they're really concerned about climate change, even though they correctly oppose the astonishingly wasteful and counterproductive programs for fueling green energy alternatives, primarily windmills and solar panels. These schemes are costing hundreds of billions of dollars and end up not reducing CO2 emissions. Germany, for instance, went whole hog for the Biden approach and is now saddled with energy costs two to three times those of the U.S. and must rely on coal-fired and nuclear power plants to produce electricity when the sun isn't shining or the windmills are not blowing. This is a critical reason why Germany today has the weakest economy in the developed world. More to the point, a carbon tax won't achieve the goals of its advocates. It is no substitute for the current green schemes in cutting the output of CO2. Renowned technologist Mark P. Mills notes that it would take an extremely high carbon tax to actually reduce carbon emissions. After all, oil prices are 200% higher today than they were a couple of decades ago. Yet global consumption of this fossil fuel has gone up 25%. In short, cutting the actual release of CO2 from a high carbon tax would require a prolonged recession. A weak economy means less use of fossil fuels. A carbon tax in reality would just enable greedy politicians to grab even more money from an already overtaxed nation. It would unnecessarily burden an underperforming economy. As for rebates for the poor, we know from experience that this will expand into an expensive vote-buying scheme. The best way to reduce emissions is to produce more clean fuels, which are natural gas and nuclear power. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.